Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Winter and this is the channel Winter Heart where I do a lot of things. I'm not gonna get into detail about them because this video is probably gonna be a little long. I don't know, it's gonna take me a bit to actually edit it too, so here we go, here goes nothing. Today, I wanted to actually talk about my favorite books that I've read within the past decade, not just within the past year, because I think I've talked about my 2019 favorites quite a lot. If you want to watch my 2019 favorites in review, I will link that down below. For now, I'm going to go through the whole decade and tell you what I read, or at least what I really liked from what I read, because I'll be honest, in 2010, which was the start of the decade, I was still in high school and I didn't keep proper track of what I read. So I was like 17. I remember in 2010 that I read, or at least around 2010, even though these books were published a while ago, I read the Gemma Doyle series by Liba Bray, and that includes the books A Great and Terrible Beauty, Rebel Angels, and the sweet far thing. I remember giving all three books at least four to five stars. I think I gave the third book five stars because it was like super climactic ending. It's like freaking crazy. I don't remember too much intricate details about the plots. I just remember really loving it and that there was a canonic lesbian couple and that, that was like a huge thing, in, not just in YA, but just in general popular fiction back when I was in high school. I remember that I had a friend at the time who was super into the books because they were like historical fantasy and she was like a history buff. She ended up majoring in history in college. She made us all read them. She was kind of like the ringleader of the group. Not exactly a healthy relationship, but we were in high school. That friend had another friend and the friend the other friend was not my friend. She was a known person who had different ideological beliefs. And she was just like really offended that my friend had warned her that the Gemma Doyle trilogy has a canonic lesbian couple. And she's just like, you didn't tell me that I think they're Peppa and Felicity are a couple. That's disgusting or whatever. And I was just like, I heard that and I was like, oh, come on. I thought it was cute. I thought it was great that they were being represented. And I was like, yeah. Plus they were like a really good couple. I mean, they weren't exactly the healthiest couple, but they were like, they were good. So Libra Bray has always been like on my favorite authors list since then. I just remember that it took me forever to finish the Sweet Far thing. And that was because of school and because I had terrible attention span. I'd be like, oh shit, I forgot to finish reading this book. Let me try to read it now. And I'm like three quarters of the way through the book. And I totally forgot what was happening. It's like if you started A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J. Mass, like the third in the Court of Thorns and Roses series. That's when the war is happening and you're just like What's happening? Who's doing what now? Who are we fighting? Yeah, that was a, that was fun. I do very clearly remember buying the Sweet Far thing probably in 2009 around Christmas time at Borders Bookstore when it was still open in my town with a friend. And he was just like, oh cool, sounds like a cool book. It was like thick too, it was like super big. I was really into that book series. That was so well written. I need to go back and reread the series because I feel like I'd appreciate it more as an adult now. Also in 2010, I remember reading reading and loving the last Princess Diaries book, which was the Princess Diaries volume 10, Forever Princess by Meg Cabot. I loved it and I remember staying up until like 4 a.m. to finish it one night, like on the weekend or something. And you know, I'd followed the series throughout my childhood and tweendom and teenagedom. And I just really liked how that book ended things. And then I found out last year, I think, that Meg Cabot had actually written like a final epilogue style book of the Princess Diaries. I don't remember what it's called. But it's supposed to be more of a adult book that like when Mia is like older and what's happened since that I haven't read because I didn't know it existed. But yeah, so I think maybe I would have given Princess Diaries volume 10 four stars or five, 4.5 maybe. It was a good ending. I really appreciated it. And I love Meg Cabot. That moves me right along. I remember reading at some point in high school, I mean up through the book, Fang in the Maximum Ride series by James Patterson. I really enjoyed this series. I think I started reading it as a tween. I I just sort of flew through the books pretty much and then like I kept reading them as they came out so I kept in the loop of them right up until Fang. I don't remember when that released but it was around then because I think Angel came out in 2011 so I was like yeah it's so good and then I bought all the manga and then I read all the manga and I was like why do I own the manga now? <laughs> unhauled all of the manga. I don't remember if I've unhauled the books though. I just remember really loving that series and the concepts behind it and the fact that they were on the run and it was high paced and it 
action-y and also young adulty and it had some romance in it and I just really liked Max. So yeah, I might reread that series sometime too because I just want to see if I still have the same feelings about it as I did then. I'm pretty sure I read it through Fang and then I was like waiting for Angel to release. And then at some point I know that I read Flipped by Wendelin Van Dronen before I ended high school. I don't entirely remember the plot for that one. Yeah, it was told in two different perspectives so that's why they called it Flipped because I think like you had to like flip the book over in order to read the other person's perspective. It's kind of cool. I thought it was really well done. It was cute but I just don't remember it. So obviously yeah I read it and I loved it but it wasn't super memorable. <laughs> I don't know probably like a four star read when I finished it but then I thought about it and it's like a three maybe. That brings us to 2011 which was the year I graduated high school. I was 18 and I was like you know what I haven't read. I never got around to finishing or really reading Breaking Dawn by Stephanie Meyer the fourth Twilight book. Mostly because she has that whole birthing scene that was like really gory and disgusting and terrifying and I had absolutely no staying power when it came to gross things or horror or gore or terror or <laughs> suspense when I was 18. Boy have I changed in the last almost 10 years. So being the mature 18 year old that I was at the time, I very politely asked my mom to look through the book, put post-it notes over the pages that she wanted me to skip because she knew that I wouldn't read them because they were horrifying and would give me nightmares at least at that time and that I wouldn't be okay if I read them. And then I read the beginning of the book again, like when Belle and Edward get married. And then I read right up to right before Bella starts giving birth to Renesme. And then I skipped that crap whole birthing scenes and my mom gave me like the whole lowdown that Renesme was born and then Jacob imprinted on her. And I was like, oh, that's weird. Okay. <laughs> like I understood what Stephanie Meyer was going for, but also it was weird. I didn't realize how weird it was back then, but it was weird. And then I read after that and everything was like fine. It went by quickly. I actually enjoyed it. I just wish that things hadn't always faded to black. If she can go into so much gory detail about the whole birthing and pregnancy and stuff and not about the sex. I was like, what the hell's the point then? And that's coming from me, a gray romantic, gray sexual, asexual. Also, I didn't think they explored Bella's vampirism well enough, so there was that. I think I gave Breaking Dawn ended in such an anticlimactic way too, so stupid. I think I might have given that three stars if I knew about the five star rating back then, so there was that. And then because like I was like, okay, I still love vampires, like I've always loved vampires, even before Twilight. What can I read next? that's vampire-like. I read Evernight, the first book of the Evernight series by Claudia Gray. And I remember liking this because it was told from a girl's perspective, of course. They went to like this boarding school and it turns out that the girl's the vampire and she was worried about turning the boy. It was probably so obvious that she was the vampire before it was revealed, but it wasn't to me at the time. So then she like, at one point she was like with the boy that she supposedly likes, but apparently she was also lusting after his blood. So she wanted him and then it's like, she's like, we came close and that's when I sunk my fangs into his neck and I was like, oh Jim! I was so taken aback. I was like, that's brilliant. Why didn't I think of that? Because I thought she was just gonna be like a human and the guy was gonna, it was gonna be like Twilight, right? But no, I don't know. I remember really loving Evernight, but it's probably not the best written. It was just a quick read and it was fun. I just never continued with the series and I have no idea why, probably because I didn't have the rest of the series. So I was just like, I'll finish it whenever. So I might have given Evernight, I mean now I probably would have given it three stars, but when I read it I probably gave it like four stars or something. I'll probably pick that up again at some point, reread it, see if I still like it. Also in 2011 I remember that I read half of the Maximum Ride book Angel and I don't remember anything of what happened in that book and I also know that I accidentally DNF'd it and the rest of the series afterwards so I never actually finished the Maximum Ride series. And I realized that and I was like, huh, what's wrong with me? Why didn't I finish that? I was really into that series. Whoopsie. Maybe I'll go back and finish it someday. Another series that I accidentally DNF'd was Life As We Knew It by Susan Beth Effer. I read the first book and I loved it and I think I gave it like five stars. Or at least I would have given it five stars. I was like, wow, this dystopia is really cool. And I think that was before I read The Hunger Games. And then I think during The Hunger Games year or something, which was a year after this, I think, at least the year that I read The Hunger Games, I read The Dead and the Gone, I think, which is also by Susan Beth 
Pfeffer and I think there's four books in that series total but I only ever read one and a half pretty much. I didn't finish reading book two. It didn't have the same staying power for me for some reason as book one. That was really a bummer but I wanted to finish that series and I really liked it. That's another series I didn't finish. Whoopsie. Throughout high school I also know for a fact that I read various manga that I don't recall all of the titles for. Manga series, manga standalones. I remember Arena Tanemura being one of my favorite authors. I remember Yu Watase. The main ones that I remember from high school were The Gentleman's Alliance Cross, Honey and Clover. I think I read Mars that summer after I graduated. Like I went to the library and just checked out Mars. I didn't get to finish Mars because the last book was always checked out. I remember the Fushigi Yugi Genbu Kaiden. I think I read like books one through three and that was all the books that they had out at the time. I don't remember if that's true or not. I also read VB Rose. I love that series. I also read Maid Sama, which I unhauled, I believe. I also started reading Pokemon Adventures manga, which there's so much of. I never got around to finishing all of it. Someday I will, probably digitally, because my manga bookcase is actually, it resides within my mom's room, which is across the hall from me, and it's full to bursting. So yeah, I mean, those are like the main ones that I remember from high school. I, I think I also read like The Legend of Zelda manga adaptations all the way up to and through a certain point, but that was like all the way that they had the manga out at that point and then I just forgot to finish the rest because I forgot about the series. And then I know for a fact that in like 2011 and moving into 2012, I also read some manga that I would spend like my uh, first couple paychecks on for instance. I read Time Stranger Kyoko. There was another one that was really cute and I would just try to keep buying them until I finished the series. I also read Hanakimi. I read it in its entirety. It is one of the only manga series that I have in its entirety. Also, I think towards the end of high school was, for me at least, was when Fruits Basket ended. Like the original Fruits Basket manga. I have that in its entirety too. I don't have Fruits Basket after. Someday I'm gonna go through and make like a video on like my favorite manga series of all time so far to date because I read a lot of it in like high school, middle schools especially, and some in, in elementary school. I'd go through phases of rereading manga and it would just be like, you know, whatever. I didn't really think that was considered reading back then. I was just thought, I just thought it was just like fun, like playing video games. So that ties up 2011. 2012 was the year that I read all three Hunger Games books by Suzanne Collins. I read The Hunger Games, Catching Fire, and Mockingjay, all within the span of probably a month because I was addicted to those books. God, I love The Hunger Games. I still love them. I don't particularly love the characters so much as I love the social commentary. So I know for a fact I would have given all three books five stars each. I think movie wise actually the adaptations for them like I never got to see Mockingjay part one or two but I did see Hunger Games and Catching Fire. Catching Fire was the star of the trilogy. Well saga I guess. Movie saga book trilogy. And then in 2012 I read Serafina by Rachel Hartman. I gave that one five stars easily. It was like my favorite book of the year. I adored it. I flew through it and it's about this girl who's like a shapeshifter sort of. She turns into like a dragon. I need to reread that and I re need to read the sequel as well as the spinoff. The sequel is called Shadow Scale and then the spinoff is called Tess of the Road. But I adored Serafina. Like I was like nobody can top this. And it was like my favorite book for a while actually. You can see that my love of dragons has stayed with me for years. And then after Serafina I read Divergent and Insurgent but I DNF'd Insurgent by Veronica Roth. I accidentally DNF'd Insurgent. Divergent was good. I think I probably gave that four stars. But Insurgent, it didn't have the same sort of spark for me. And I never went on to Allegiant or four. <laughs> sorry, Veronica. But I just didn't continue you. And I'm sorry. And then I was in an English class that made us read The Book Thief by Marcus Zuzek. I remember that we had like a exam for that book. I was like, oh, it's a book that I have to read for school. I hate it. But also like I liked it because it was told from death's perspective. And during World War II and I was like, yeah, that's so cool my shit. Did give the book a good rating. I mean like maybe like a four star, 3.5 to four star. Our final exam for that was we were given like a choice list of prompts and one of the prompts was the one I chose and it was like a creative writing interpretation, like reinterpretation of the story because the ending of the book isn't told entirely in death's perspective. I don't know. And I just remember I wrote it in death's perspective and I was like, this is fun. I had a lot of fun with that and I got an A. I have good memories about the book Thief despite the
the fact that it was a book that I had to read for school and I hate that. And we also had to read Selections from Good Poems, which was a compilation of poetry edited, collected by Garrison Keillor. I, being me, being the overachiever that I am, I read more than that and I feel like I read almost the entire book, if not the entire book. I remember bookmarking like almost every poem that I liked. And we had to do like a final project on it too. And I remember that I also did a final project on the poet Merwin, but I don't remember what books of his that I read because he has poetry collections. I did love reading his poetry and that's what I wrote my paper on. And then in 2012, The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern came out. I gave that five stars even though it took me a year and a half to finish reading that freaking book. And then I never finished all the way. Like I think I tried to finish it and then I forgot to finish it. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's super fun, but I give that five stars. And then there's more manga that I just, I know I read, I just can't remember all of their titles. So that's 2012. I mean, like I read a lot, but I mean, I was working most of the time and not doing so well. And I think I had my first mental breakdown 2012. So there's that. In 2013, the year I went to Hawaii for the last time this decade, first and last time, that was when I first read A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. I found this book at the airport in, I think it was at the LAX airport that we flew out of. And I read some of that book on the way there. I think it was like a four hour flight or something to Hawaii. And yeah, it was really cool. I think my friend that I took with us on the trip at the time she'd picked up Cassandra Clare's City of Bones and she was like I've heard so many people talking about this I want to read it and she ended up finishing her book during the trip and I, I didn't finish mine but I finished mine after the trip thoroughly enjoyed a discovery of witches I gave it five stars I thought it was great it was exactly the kind of like vampire witch romance sort of thing that I was looking for after Twilight then I started reading Shadow of Night by Deborah Harkness and I accidentally DNF'd it because school got in the way and that's when I started focusing on anthropology as my major I mean I didn't really need through any books. I mean, as an anthropology major, I remember that I read, there was a book on the Kennewick Man. I loved that book. I just never bought it and I never finished it, but I would have given that five stars because it was really cool. I was in Native American studies and oh boy, <laughs> it was a really good class. It made me angry all the time because of the injustices that the Native Americans have experienced thanks to white settlers. Yeah, it was very important to learn. And then that year I also read the first of the Matched trilogy by Ali Condi. I love matched and I, I thought of it as a popcorn read. I might have given it three or two stars now but at the time when I finished reading it it was like four stars and I loved it but I didn't have the money to get crossed or reached so I didn't finish that series but I did love matched and I almost unhauled that book and then I saw it and remembered hey I want to reread this so I still have that book somewhere and then sometime during I think it was during like my philosophy class where everybody just did not give any shits about what the professor thought. The professor was so chill. They didn't care. I read the majority, and I accidentally DNF'd it again. See a pattern here? Of the book, I think it was called Norse Myths and Legends. I really loved it, and that's when I learned about Norse mythology. And I read, like I said, most of the myths and legends. I did not read any of the sagas, but I did read, you know, the tales of Thor and like the drinking game with the giants and stuff that's basic. That was my 2013 reads. In 2014, that was when I transferred to the first university I went to. I was an anthropology major. And I remember very clearly reading Beyond the Shadow of Camp Town, Korean Military Brides in America by Ji Yeon Yu. I give that five stars because it was well written. It was basically an essay in book form or research paper in book form. And that was for war and migration. That was the course I took. We were talking about the impacts of war on migration and what migration does to cultures as well as how it helps mesh them together. And that was really fascinating. And then I also read Body Counts, The Vietnam War and Militarized Refugees by Yen Li Espiritu. That one was also five stars and I used that I think in a paper. And then I also read Saga Volume one in 2014, or at least saga number one, maybe collections number one, saga collections number one, whatever. And I liked it, but I also didn't. I DNF'd it, the series at least, but I did borrow that from a friend and I liked it, so I gave it like maybe three stars. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah, so 2014 I was mostly reading textbooks, and those were the two that I actually finished and remembered, and I think I still have. In 2015, I read the majority of, I didn't finish this one, like I was so close to finishing it, but it's still one of the best ones I have, The Birth of Korea. 
Korean Cool, How One Nation is Conquering the World Through Pop Culture by Yuni Hong. And that was for my Korea specific culture course on Korea, like South Korea specifically, but Korea in general, like Korean culture in general. That one and also like there was one that was called Transnational Sport, but I started reading that, but then that was when I had to drop out of the university and I was really sad about that because I really loved that course and I couldn't just keep one course and drop the rest of my courses because universities hate you when you're sick, mentally or physically or both. But before I dropped, I think I read Warring Souls, Youth Media and Martyrdom in Post-Revolution Iran by Roxanne Barzi, who was actually my professor for this anthropological media course I took. It was like a interdisciplinary course and she was really cool. She was just so busy that she barely had time to teach class and so we had this terrible TA who took over for her and basically almost got fired because she kept giving us false information that the professor never actually said to say or grade us on or whatever. That was an experience. But I did give Warring Souls like a four star. I mean, as good as it was, it was also, I don't know, a little flashy. I don't know how to describe it. It's like she was trying a little too hard to be dramatic. And I mean that in the best way. I love Professor Varzi. She's great. And she's a good anthropologist. There was another book that I read most of as well. And it was called Regarding the Pain of Others. It's a quick book and I got the gist of it essentially enough to just make my way through the class and survive. I think I would have given that at least like maybe 3.5 to 4 stars because it was a pretty good book. Important concepts and such. I also read Nimona by Noelle Stevenson and I gave that one 5 stars. I don't remember if that was the year it was published or if it was like published the year before and I'd just gotten to it. I don't know. I highly recommend that. It's a graphic novel compilation of comics from a webcomic by the same name by the same author. She just finally got it published. Also I think around 2014, 2015 was when I read the web comics All of What Was Out of Cucumber Quest by Gigi DG. I gave that one five stars because I was like obsessed. I loved it. And then there was this other web comic that's on permanent hiatus now that I read that's called Balderdash, but it's on permanent hiatus and that really saddens me because it was one of my favorites. I was also reading the web comic Agents of the Realm. Love that. It's kind of like a Sailor Moon style story, only with women of color and they're also queer and it's great. Gave that one at least five stars as well. It was up there for me. It was one of my favorite web comics. At the time I still was reading Homestuck. I think Homestuck ended in 2016 by Andrew Hussey. So I was still reading Homestuck off and on whenever it updated. I love Homestuck to death. I'm going to always give it five stars even though it probably doesn't deserve five stars. Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff is another one but I didn't really keep up with that one so much. I mean I think I have the compilation of volume one of those. And then I also read another webcomic. At least I read all of what was out at the time, but it's still ongoing, I think. It's called Gunner Craig Court by... But I love it. It's so good. It deals with the intersection of myth and science and like faith and such. The humans are the scientific ones and like the robots are the ones that have faith. <laughs> it's so cool, like honestly. And there's like actual representation of mythological figures like Coyote in there. It's so good. And then I read the Lumberjanes volumes one and two. I love Lumberjanes. Those are also graphic novels. Novels. It's just it's about a group of I think five girls at like a summer camp But there's some weird shit happening. So it was really cool and paranormal and such So that was like 2015 for me 2016 was one of the worst years of my life alongside 2014 Which was when I had my injury I read suicide notes from beautiful girls by Lynn Weingarten and I gave that actually five stars now I'm not sure what the feedback is on this book how it was received I don't know if people on booktube love it or hate it, but I I personally loved it despite the fact that the characters were extremely problematic and the story and the relationships between the characters were also bad. I just thought it was so interesting. I thought the character of Delia, like I remember them very clearly, was interesting how chaotic she was and also the fact that she was in love with her best friend June for like ever and June didn't really realize that until like the end of the book. I thought that was cool too. Like I was like, yeah, because like Delia is clearly stated as gay in the book and you don't know that June is at least bi or something until she realizes it herself and I think it's at the end of the book. I'm probably gonna reread it at some point but I know I gave that five stars. It got me out of a slump and then I read Lumberjanes number three, four, and five and I loved all of them. I think I gave them all five stars or four stars or whatever. I don't remember specific plots for specific books on the Lumberjanes series. I just know that I loved that series and it was important and also Homestuck ended that year and I wasn't devastated 
but I also wasn't pleased. Homestuck was great though. It was a great experience. I was proud to be a part of that fandom community, regardless of how bad some of the people in it were and how they had moved on to Undertale after that and kind of poisoned some parts of that too. I will always be a life and heart player at the same time. I will always be a mage and a rogue at the same time. And Durst Dreamers Unite! That was 2016, and in 2017, I read Lumberjanes number six, and then I completely forgot to continue with the series. Whoops. But I loved Lumberjanes. And then I went into a reading slump, but then I got out of it around the end of summer, and that's when I first read Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. And then I proceeded to read Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. Both Fangirl and Eleanor and Park I gave five stars because I was like, damn, these are great. And then I read what I could of the rest of Rainbow Rowell's backlog, which was Landline and Attachments. I really enjoyed Landline, and Attachments was okay. So I think I gave Landline 4.5 out of 5 and then attachments would have been like a 3.5 out of 5. And then the very, very end of 2017 was when I met a new friend and she introduced me to the Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J Mass. So that was when I read the first book of that series. And I gave it five stars because it blew my mind. I had been out of the loop somewhat for so long, in the YA genre specifically. And because of her influence as well, she had been reading these poetry books during our creative writing course, which this was the year that I decided to pursue creative writing. She was reading Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaur and The Sun and Her Flowers by Rupi Kaur and I read both of those as well. Or at least I read Milk and Honey in its entirety and then I almost finished The Sun and Her Flowers and totally forgot to finish it because I'm like terrible at finishing things apparently. Have you noticed a theme? That was it. 2017. Yes. Moving on to 2018. I started the year off by reading A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Mass and I gave that one five stars because damn I thought that was great. It wasn't my favorite book, but it was also like I loved the direction that the series was going in. And then I actually really enjoyed A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Mass, which is the third book. I think I would have rated that one higher than A Court of Mist and Fury because of the whole war and I loved the total climactic like ending and like the sisters like banding together to kill the King of Highburn. Like that was amazing. I liked the fact that we had closure, supposed closure with Tamlin. So that was great. And then after I finished Court of Wings and Ruin, I was like, what the hell else? do I freaking read? So I started the Throne of Glass series and I read all the way up to Tower of Dawn and totally didn't read it. My favorites of the series are Crown of Midnight, which is book two, Queen of Shadows, which is book four, and then Empire of Storms, which is book five, which I think is the best one. The first and third ones were eh to me. I mean, I, could, I honestly could care less about Aelin and Rowan. I'm sorry. I care about everyone else. I really love Lysandra. Adian is funny. I just love Lysandra and A. A Aelin's rapport. It's really funny and it's really great and Lysandra is so good. So then I started and DNF Tower of Dawn and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna wait to read Tower of Dawn until Kingdom of Ash comes out and then I just <laughs> never read it. I have like three copies, four copies of Kingdom of Ash and I haven't read it. Moving on after that, I read The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas and I gave that one five stars. It became probably my favorite book of the year. Alongside Little Do We Know by Tamara Ireland Stone, I was also five stars. Invisible Ghosts by Robin Schneider was also five stars for me. All three of those books were. And then I got My Plain Jane in an Owl Crate. That was also like five stars. Oh, I thought it was really great. And that's by Cynthia Hand, Jody Meadows, and Brody Ashton, the Lady Janies. I I'm looking forward to My Calamity Jane is coming out. And I also have to read My Lady Jane. I think I started that and then I DNF'd it. Whoops. And now on to my favorite books I've read of 2019. But I'm not gonna go in depth on them because I feel like I've talked about them ad nauseum at this point. This year I read The Cruel Prince and the Wicked King, both by Holly Black. And I gave both of them four stars, but I mean like they're some of my favorite books. So I think the star rating is arbitrary. And then I read Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I I feel like I said I might have given that four stars, but it's a five star for me. It's one of my favorite books of all time. Same thing with These Witches Don't Burn by Isabel Sterling. That one was five stars from me. Radio Silence by Alice Oseman was also, it's like my top favorite book at this point of all time. Five stars, if I could give it more, I would. Asexual Representation, Platonic Friendships, Gay People, House of Salt and Sorrows was also five stars from me. An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir, the first book of that series by her. I gave that one five stars and it's so good. I wanna read the next two books 
books in that series. I really enjoyed reading The Astonishing Color of After by Emily X. R. Pan. I also read Life is Strange Dust and Life is Strange Waves. Both of them were five stars. I read a bunch of Welcome to Night Vale books by that author, but my favorite one was It Devours by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner. Kind of talks about the intersection of science and faith as well. I think it's the best written Night Vale novel so far, but that's just what I think. I look forward to the third book coming out. I don't remember what it's called. It might be about the faceless old woman, actually. So I'll be listening to that when that comes out. The last one that I have on my list here is The Princess Saves Herself in This One by Amanda Lovelace, a poetry collection. I think I said I gave it four or five stars. I really liked that and I started reading The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one and then I just forgot to finish it. Ending 2019, with a bang. Started Renegades and I finished it in January. So that's pretty much like all of my favorite books that I read this decade that I can recall because I didn't keep proper track of them except for like in the last three years. Yeah, if you enjoyed this and you stayed through to the very end, like give me a like please. I prepared for this video and it was, it was a little difficult. I had to go through my Goodreads read list and like I, I've read more books than this obviously. I read more books when I was younger and I don't remember everything and I don't remember when I read everything. I just remember what I've read mostly and what's really stood out to me and impacted me the most. So thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna go drink a thousand gallons of water because my throat is dry <coughs> and I will see you all in another video of mine very very soon. Bye everyone. Thank you.